kicks it away and we are underway in Big Ten game number two for both teams. So he's a local product and we are underway off the toss to Rodney Smith. He is swarmed under on a loss by T.J. McCollum. Well, that's where we have to start with guys that we haven't even laid eyes on. Rota to throw. He wants the left side and it's nearly intercepted. A big collision there. Dewan Hunt, the senior defensive back, crashed into Phillip Howard. And we have a player down, the potential receiver on that particular play, and Hunt actually broke back on the ball. Rota led that to the sideline, and I believe it's Phillip Howard that tried to catch that football, and he was blown up by Hunt as the ball arrived. Purdue has been a big hitting team, but also has drawn a couple of targeting fouls in the last game against Michigan. So they're without Jacob Thienem in the junior safety and middle linebacker Jawan Bentley because of big hits in that second half of the Michigan game. Again, yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, that is fantastic news. Minnesota is a heavy running team, but on second down and long, they went for Howard. Big collision. Check down for Smith and Rodney Smith veering across the 25. T.J. McCollum with his second tackle. He only got four and it's punt time for the Gophers. Ryan Santoso struggled with kickoffs last week so Herbers rolls and boots this one and that's not going terribly far. So that's kind of what you get right now. He's off to a fantastic start through four games this season. Blau, quick set and throw, Terry Wright. Trying to break a tackle after an 11 yard punt. Tremendous field position. Just like it was under Joe Tiller years ago, right here in this place. More innovation coming from the Purdue offensive factory as face mask flags fly everywhere. Knox got turned around and draws a couple of markers. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 19, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Top 25 penalized team, least penalties. P.J. Flex, Golden Gophers, but they're a big one. Blau to throw off play action. Goes sideline, touchdown. Cole Herbman, the tight end on a Leesburg, Virginia, scores it. They've alternated kickers. You'll see both Spencer Evans and J.D. Dellinger likely, as that one's no good. <laughs> Another long one to the end zone and a touchback. Connor Rota back out. Smith the tailback. They will go inside and Purdue lights it up. Garrett Hudson in for Bentley with a targeting penalty. Third down for Rota. Free runner coming and that's going to be about a yard short of the marker. They do run it. And they do get it. Shannon Brooks, the junior from north of Atlanta, moves the sticks. Vincent Calhoun, the senior at right guard, with the injury to Jared Weiler. Rhoda, trying to elude pressure, throws it to the Purdue sideline. Right here, it's the inside zone. You see Purdue loading the box to destroy that play. Smith turns it upfield to the 40. Rhoda looks the other way, gives ground, and flips it out incomplete. Mosley got a hand on it, and it's fourth down. Now Santoso, who'd been the punter for the year, is in for Herbers, who kicked it 11 yards last time. There's a flag down. This is a wobbler that goes spinning to the 25-yard line. We'll check the marker. See what Ron Snodgrass has to say. Five players in the backfield. Offense, five-yard penalty be enforced by the end of the kick first down timeout they're going to go ahead and take the kick and tack on the five after it as terry wright has this grab from blau who's been an 80 percent passer in the first half this year markel jones back from injury with flags flying in personal foul flipping offense number 75 15-yard penalty, repeat second down. It's on the Northern Illinois transfer, Shane Evans. This seems to be working well for both of these guys currently. Blau to the outside, Jared Sparks, the redshirt freshman. Yeah, he made Brian do it. 
just for good measure. That one's intercepted. Blau picked off. Kunle Allende, the red shirt senior, ripped it off. Tremendous field position, and they will go jet sweep with the tailback Brooks, who was lined up as a receiver, and he gets mauled behind the line. And the quarterback Blau has the experience where he needed to diagnose that better. Brooks has a seam. Shannon Brooks inside the 15. And just out of bounds before the goal line. Blackman nudged him out. First and goal, Minnesota. And Shannon Brooks is more of the big play guy. His problem is staying healthy. You have Rodney Smith also that is more of the physical pounder, but it's Shannon Smith that has that knack for turning a five or six yarder into a 15 to 25 yarder, and we saw it right there. That was his longest of the year, Brooks, a 40 yard gain. And he gets the carry. He is swung down by Hudson, the reserve inside linebacker, in for the targeting suspended Bentley, second and goal. Smith, hesitation. Smith goes down. Ball came loose. And we'll see if they say he's down. TJ Jallo busted in to make the stop. It's very close to a fumble. Third down and goal for Rhoda. The senior fading back, throws it goal line. Touchdown! Ty Johnson just got in. And it worked out well for him right there. Carpenter's the extra point is good. Is good. There's a bouncer, and they flip it to DJ Knox. They'll get across the 25, and that's it. And their defense is playing very well at the right time. Knox finds a crease and gets about five yards. Blau to throw on second down, down the middle, looks for the tight end, and is it complete is the question. Minnesota says no. Purdue says yes, and Herdman did make the grab. Herdman goes down and gets that one off the carpet. And whistles with the snap. They're going to take a further look at that. Catch, no catch. Rolling on the field was a completed catch. Plays under further review. Yeah, Minnesota, initially, a couple of Golden Gopher players waved it off, thinking that it hit the ground. So well, they're we on the see. defensive side. What, what do you think they're going to say? Yeah, but they were vehement, right? They didn't just kind of... No, are you saying they can't <laughs> be deceitful vehemently? After review, the ball hit the ground in the process of the catch. It is an incomplete pass. It's third down at the 31-yard line. Please reset the game clock to four minutes, 10 seconds. Blau on third down. He can run, and he does run. Near midfield, first down, David Blau. Cashman ushered him out after a gain of 18. Play action. He saw the pressure coming. He hits Sparks, who turns it upfield and gets leveled at the 45-yard line by Celestine. Post-snap like it was on that play. DJ Knox withstands a tackle and picks up the first down. It took Thomas Barber to drop him, but that's a muscular run for five. What do you gain? I think you just gain a look whether they're going to bring pressure or not from the defensive side, which they do. They got a real good look at that pressure. Barber came blitzing and sacks Blau. A defender that has three guys blocking him. Obviously, that was a missed assignment by Shane Evans. Pressure coming again. Blau steps up and he airmailed it. That might be the win you were talking exactly. about. Exactly. If anybody could, it would be the engineers here at Purdue. Blau to throw, third and forever. Checked down for Knox. A lot of space for Knox across the 35, and he's going to be close enough to go for it. Jet sweep. Jackson Anthrop. First down, the legacy boilermaker on the run to move the sticks. Father was a basketball player at Purdue as well. 
They roll the pocket with Blau. More room to run. Wide open space for Blau inside the 15. And he got hit late. It draws a marker, rightfully so. Celestine with a damaging blow to Blau. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number 13. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Jason, this is when I think David Blau is at his best. When he runs with the football, and I don't know, that was close. It looked like Blau was, still had a foot in. I think that was a questionable call with the late hit at the end. But it was a great decision by the quarterback before that. And that's why the interceptions are down, because he's making better decisions and creating things with his feet. Worship the tailback in motion. Blau wanted to run, and he loses a lot of room. Celestine, who just had the penalty, whips him down. Second and goal, Purdue. Eric Swingler, the tackle, has checked in eligible, and he's plowing forward for Worship, the tailback. We'll have third down and goal for Purdue. Play number 13 of the drive. Blau. Into coverage, intercepted. His second pick. This one's Kamal Martin, and there was no window for Blau. Cole Herndon going to the back of the end zone. The tight end just releases and gets upfield, but he was doubled. Actually, might have been tripled. This is a great example of a quarterback just simply getting locked in. That is a hurtful pick. Shannon Brooks, another big hit for Minnesota. First down, Gophers. But this would be a nice push it in the right direction sort of victory. Smith, the tailback, jockeying through traffic. He could go. Rodney Smith down the sideline. Keeps his feet and goes twirling inside the 15 yard line. Goal to go for Minnesota. And this one is bottled up with Brooks. Second and goal out of the timeout. Rhoda with an option for Brooks. Seeking the pylon. He was out of bounds. Short of the goal line. It's going to be third and goal. McCollum and Bailey, the linebackers, together to knock him out. Play action. Rhoda stared down the blitz and throws a dagger to Lingen for the touchdown. He sneaks to the back of the end zone. Both of those are byproducts of the inside zone. He was staring down the barrel of heat as well. Santoso, that's a good leg into it for a touchback. New quarterback for Purdue, Elijah Sindelar, who usually takes the second quarter, is in after three drives, went touchdown, interception, interception for Blau. He's got Markel Jones back from injury behind him, so an all-new tandem there as Sindelar throws into the lawn, second and ten. Yeah, that's an interception he would like to have back, certainly, and there's that rub play that Purdue likes to run, Terry right over the middle, third down. That one to the sideline went into dirt early. Jones finds a crease and a first down for the Boilermakers, just short of the 40-yard line, gain of eight. He'll call them with both, but if there's one of the two he'd rather go deep with, it would be Sindelar. This is a screen for Terry Wright, who surges across midfield, ball loose, and we'll see who comes up with it. Barber knocked it out. Minnesota is pointing gopher ball, let's see. And Wright is still down on the ground and appears to be hurt. The question is whether he had a knee down before this ball came out. The officials are taught to let it play out. Don't blow the ball dead. Minnesota came up with it immediately after the play, which is also significant. But I certainly think this is going to be reviewed. We'll see if it is Minnesota ball right had it knocked out by Barber. Kelly, that's going to be very close. Again, you would need indisputable video evidence of the clear recovery in a pile like that. After review, the ball was loose before the runner's knee was down. It is a fumble. First down, Minnesota. And they're without one of them, Thieneman, due to the targeting suspension. 
Smith shirked one tackle, but not the rest of him. And no gain. Second down and 10. Antoine Miles busted in. This is a much improved Purdue defense. 117th last year. Rhoda to throw, and it's incomplete. Will there be a marker? Bailey on Wozniak. And third down coming up. Redshirt senior Rhoda with Miles bearing down on him. Rhoda steps out of bounds. Santoso with the wind at his back. Sends it up into the jet stream. Anthrop lets it bounce. It checks up. Minnesota gets down there at the one yard line. 54 yards on the punt. Eric Carter touched it up. Sindelar back in after taking over second quarter. They run with Jones, and not much there. And that may not be the only weather issue, the gale force winds, because rain is on its way to West Lafayette. Sindelar on the screen, has a first down for Anthony Mahungu, down the sideline and just short of midfield. First down, Purdue, out of their own end zone. Gain of 39. Really a one-man tunnel screen. Grant Hermans, the left tackle, gets out there, gets a great block, and it turns into a very productive play. Well executed on the single-man tunnel. That's a pretty good screen. I'm going to send him back. Stepped out of bounds at the 43 for Mahungu, the Parisian senior. Sindelar is hit, and down he goes. Ball loose. Batted around. Is it another Purdue turnover? Jackson knocked it away. Merrick Jackson. And it is Minnesota football. Andrew Stelter, the recovery. He loves getting energy up about turnovers, and we saw it there. Rodney Smith running parallel and belted out of bounds at the 33. Play action for Rhoda. Pocket holds up this time, and a diving grab inside the 20-yard line. Brandon Lingen went horizontal for 15 yards. Remember, that's a 6'5", 254-pound guy. Very well thrown by Rhoda, and the 6'5", tight end goes down and appears to make a great catch. Rhoda clapping for it and finally gets it. Brooks puts his head down. Brooks this time bottled up. Nothing there. Lorenzo Neal, the son of the former NFL fullback with the tackle. Third down on the way. Third down and two for the Gophers. Brooks hopping through, pushing the pile. Rhoda says first down, and it looks like he's very close. Robinson stopped him at the eight, but that's all he needed. They do. First down, Minnesota. Some close games in recent memory. Here's that option again. Rhoda turns it upfield, lost the ball. And let's see, did Purdue get it back? Oh, it's a disaster for Minnesota on the way in. Ezechuku knocked it free. Mosley recovered for Purdue. And Minnesota coughs it up, and Purdue now has the ball. Could have been a two-score game. Is not quick hit for Anthrop, turning it upfield to the 15. Boilers just got one back, but uh, four turnovers last 22 plays is not a good number. No, it really isn't. You don't want to see that. And Minnesota will, needs to live on turnovers and certainly not turning the ball over themselves. Very innovative mind, but sometimes it's terribly simple as well. Quick hitter goes nowhere for Jones. Barber danced down with him, so second down and nine. It was only a matter of time before he moved up to this level. We'll see if he can get it done in the Big Ten. Sindelar rolling out, wanted to uncork, and now he takes a dive, so third down on the way. Yeah, you don't want to run on Jeff Brahm out there at center. 
Sindelar lets it rip, nearly intercepted. Huff had the last hand on it as Phillips had it pinball around. So Very punt time. First punt for Joe Shopper comes into the wind. And that's a pretty good punt into the wind. Fair caught by Chenault. He's a sharp cat. You talked about Jeff Rom. Matt Campbell is right in that mix. There goes Rhoda. And he's down at the 45. Eddie Wilson with the tackle. Blitz coming. Rhoda throws into it and has a completion for Rodney Smith into plus territory and a first down. Smith. Straight ahead, and the Gopher is willing to take some time off the clock. As you said, their core play is that inside zone. We've seen it a bunch. Rhoda to throw, launching with the wind at his back, and incomplete. Mosley on the coverage of Lingen, and it's third down. Purdue rushes four to the outside, and Smith. And he is gang tackled at the 39. So if you're Purdue, do you call timeouts here or no? I think you do. I think that's who Jeff Brom is. But I, at the same time I say that, Jeff Brom doesn't have all the pieces in place that he wants. And so I think at Western Michigan a year ago, he would want to get all of the guns out. I mean, all the bullets out of the gun. But here, I don't think you do. Here comes the flag for delay. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Penn State may be a close third, but there's a lot of sorting out to be done. That is a bad choice by Anthrop. Why touch the ball there? You're well, inside, you're well inside the 10. It's those decisions that just drive Jeff Brom crazy. You're inside the 10, and the wind is blowing 20 to 30 miles an hour. All of that has disaster written all over it. And by the way, that's not a legal fair catch signal either because he only waved the one time. Yep. You have to have multiple waves above the shoulders. That didn't happen there. No flag, but where could they have gone anyway? They're at the they would have gone back. Yard line. They would have gone back to the one, right? <laughs> half a, half the distance. But now anything, a bobbled snap, anything like that, puts you in harm's way for no reason. Knocks the tail back, and he is charged with getting some yardage here. He thought about spinning it outside. Now goes up the middle on what very well may be the final play of the first half. Purdue is going to run another play, and it's Knox. Don't necessarily know what the value is there either, unless you bust it. And them um, look like Minnesota was going to use one, and they yeah. don't have any left. Do they? Or they probably would have. Kind of a disjointed I'm first half. I'm out on the field. And that's going to do it for the first half. Two first-year coaches who are looking more at culture than results, 14 to 6. Knox from the 10. DJ Knox with a seam to the outside and out of bounds. Sindelar to throw on his first play, a check down for Jones and an open field tackle after a gain of one. Trying to load the box. A run for Jones with a big gap and chopped down by Huff right at the marker. I mean, your culture and, and trying to get the players as soon as you can on your roster. Sindelar for Sparks, and the freshman turns it upfield just short of the line to gain. It'll be second down and two, tripped up by Martin. And then you just get it to a playmaker and let him get yards. Jones could not keep his feet, so third down and one for Purdue. Both teams are really using the short passing game as an extension of the run game. Who takes the first big shot, do you think? You know, this wind is kind of, I think, dictate that. It's hard to throw deep when it's at your back, and it's almost impossible to throw deep when you're going into it. So we may be seeing the pass game 20 yards and shorter to here this afternoon. Jones straight up the middle, inviting contact with Celestine, and he won. Jones did first down. My goodness. 
slow games, although close games, as Sindelar rips it for Zico, and he couldn't hang on. He played in some mop-up duty last year, five games as a reserve, and he hands it off this time. Purdue has really, really struggled on third down this year, 31% for the season. Sindelar, shovel pass, great call. Markel Jones to the 15-yard line. There's the ingenuity from Braun. He learned from Bill Walsh, among others, in his 49er days. Sindelar runs right into the pressure from Carter Coughlin, who had one play off, and his return is a big one. This has meant screen game for Purdue up to this point in time. Sindelar rolling the pocket, dumps it off for Knox. Upfield he goes. Touchdown, DJ Knox. Dellinger to kick, and it's a one-point game. Minnesota's more grinded out type of team. They want to be physical at the line of scrimmage. Once again, a touchback. So 14 to 13 as Connor Rhoda goes back to the steering wheel for Minnesota. Redshirt senior who thought he was done. He had senior day last year. He's got more in him. He throws for the sideline, very close. Ty Johnson was there. Former high school basketball player Johnson with great hands. Smith weaving his way through traffic for a nice gain on first down to the 42. Bailey the tackle, second down coming up. Purdue has added defenders here in the second half. Thieneman, the safety, and Bentley who's in on that tackle. Jawan Bentley, who was suspended for the first half with a targeting penalty against Michigan, hits him for a loss of three. And Bentley is one of the most physical middle linebackers that you will see in the country 6 2 260 and he's active he's a ball hawk and he's going to make up for the first half at least try to here in this second half this would have been his 30th career start he'll have to wait for that third down seven four-man rush Rhoda feels it, gets out of the pocket. Ezechuku couldn't make the tackle, and Rhoda is out of bounds. Fourth down, Minnesota. Ryan Santoso to punt to Anthrop, who made the odd decision to end the first half. This one fading back, and he's down at the 24. Purdue will have it there when we come back. Queen of a parade or something. Looked like you were on a backlot tour. That one's incomplete. Too high for Anthrop. Second down. It's an expansive. We're, that part thing goes of the 75 mile an hour down the highway. There's no way in the world. Isn't that amazing? Here's another trick play from Purdue. Anthrop to the 31 yard line, and it was Mahungu. It was Anthrop at the end. There were a couple touches for the quarterback as well. They ran trick plays on the first play of the first half and the first play of the third quarter against Michigan to varying degrees of success. Sindelar, the sophomore, over the middle. That was a line drive caught by Herdman. Great hands by the junior tight end out of Virginia to reel that in at close range. Flea flicker again. Sindelar loads it up. Down the field at the 35-yard line. Jared Sparks. What a catch for 24 to enliven the crowd. 216 through the air for Purdue. Jet sweep. Greg Phillips knocked down on a nice play in space. Sparks did a great job of going up and snatching that football. Sindelar steps up, throws it all the way across the field. Phillips breaks a tackle. And he is to the 15. There is a flag down at the point where Sindelar threw the ball. It's a gain of 15 if it stands. This may be Shane Evans, the left guard, getting called for this hold. Holding. Holding. Offense. Number 75. 10-yard penalty. Second down. 
and the offensive lineman does not know that and just hangs on to anything he can. So they lose 25 yards on the penalty, and they lose more there as Carter Coughlin has had a whale of a third quarter. Sends on our third down throw. Pocket collapsed. He felt it. It's incomplete on the short hop as Steven Richardson came barreling in to make the hit on Sindelar. Former which, quarterbacks don't like bad throws any more than the current quarterback does. Yeah, the standards are pretty high over yeah. on the sideline for the quarterback position. Shopper to Chenault, and beautifully covered by Purdue. Malcolm Dotson got down there to shove it out of the end zone, and Sparks covered it. Minnesota on first down. Rhoda from the end zone uncorks for Johnson and incomplete. I think there are a handful of things that can be duplicated again by Jeff Brom. Why reinvent the wheel? Joe Tiller made it happen here in a big way. He spread out the Big Ten. Certainly coaches had to notice his third downs coming up after the carry by Smith. That's really the recruiting template. You're not going to get all the five stars here. So you have to be innovative with that kind of thing. Had a great eye for personnel. On third and nine, Minnesota is staring down, punting into the win. McCollum got to Smith, and here comes fourth down. What can you get done throwing into this win that is picking up as we speak? Santoso to Anthrop, and that bounces the wrong way for the Gophers as a flag comes in. In fact, two are down at the 10-yard line. So we'll see where this is going. Holding, receiving team, Ooh. number 55, 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. Best field position for the Boilermakers in a long while. And Jones was sent back by the immediate pressure from the defensive line and Richardson. It was Barber with the tackle, but Richardson yeah. was in the backfield. Here's a guy with three sacks the last couple of years against Purdue Richardson as this is Jones tripped up back at the 40. Third down and 10. Jones on the delay. Oh, what a big play by Kamal Martin. There was daylight. Purdue alternates kickers, Dellinger and Evans, kick by kick, but Evans has the longer leg, so he gets the call from 52 with the wind at his back. Whatever wind is left, as Chris said, for the lead for the Boilermakers. Evans. No good. That's the therefore part. I see. Brooks on the run. Brooks the tailback on second down for Minnesota. It is Brooks rummaging toward the line to gain. It's a kicking game that has not been great for Purdue so far, whether it's Evans or anybody, as Brooks has the first down on a gain of four, and Minnesota willing to sap out the clock all year long. Will they run a play is the question. Answer pending. McCrary in a tailback, and he thunders up the middle for about a yard. Minnesota and Purdue neck and neck, but the winner very soon may be the weather. We shall find out. Big Ten game number two trying to hold off the clouds. Second down and nine for Smith. And the offense, Rhoda's only thrown it 14 times, but has not made any mistakes, really. And that's the key, because he's not going to throw it a lot. Rhoda, incomplete. Johnson intended, he misfired, fourth down. How about Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator for Purdue? told us along with his defensive end Danny as a Chuku that he likes to hold some stuff back for the second half not as a counter punch but just to have something exotic for late in the game as this punt goes sailing toward the end zone and in he can do everything some say Sindelar who's been in since the fourth drive hits Phillips who was decked by the freshman Thomas there's the positive 
but then those negatives start to show up and there really isn't any upside anymore. DJ Knox, who had the most recent touchdown, has a first down this time. And remember what Chris said about the nerves down there that Brom saw from Blau. Sindelar finds himself some time and nearly had it picked off. Allende would have had his second interception of the game. A lot of times on the when you move the pocket, your feet aren't going to be set. It's more of a matter of following through and learning that you're going to have to throw off platform. Anthrop on the screen with a convoy. Anthrop on the run inside the 30. Allende dragged him down after 35. The legacy Boilermaker, his brother, a former football player. Other brother played basketball, dad did too. Phillips on the outside was down before the 20 yard line. Kamal Martin with the stop and Sindelar and Blau. It's been Sindelar for most of the afternoon. As Thomas is down. Purdue with Knox. DJ Knox and a flag is in. It's a first down, but it may come back. That was an incredible jump cut by Knox, but this may be Shane Evans on the hold again. Offense, number 75, 10 yard penalty, second down. It is. Second time Purdue's lost a first down in the red zone off a holding penalty. Knox again gets it back and more to the 10 yard line. Knox tripped up. Barber the tackle, second and goal. Sindelar the throw and he missed Anthrop. Third and goal. Third down. Field goal is no guarantee on a windy day. Jones outside stopped Chenault and Richardson fourth and goal what's your choice well I can already see the field goal team coming on and I think that's the right decision to take the potentially take the lead in this game I think the only hesitation is that you're not real sound at the kicking position right now it's Dellinger who gets the call from 19. Shopper holds for the lead. Good. They take the lead, but those clouds are very ominous. And with lightning on its way, Time we'll out see on how the long field. this continues. We are in a weather delay. Please evacuate. And there is the delay. Well, Purdue has retaken the lead after being up only 6-0. Evans strikes it. Brooks is back. From the goal line. Not much there, just across the 15-yard line, down at the 17. How about that? Jim Harbaugh driving the adjustments for other visiting teams. Brooks. On the carry, they've used him as a wide receiver on that fly sweep action, gate of five. Connor rode up to Smith on the handoff, and Smith seeking that first down marker, driving the pile. He does have the first down as Thieneman made the stop, but this heavy running team goes right back there with the junior Rodney Smith. Minnesota off the loss to Maryland last weekend, its first loss of the year. Rota play action. Long ball. And this is almost intercepted by Thieneman. There is a flag down. He well overshot Ty Johnson. There might be a holding penalty as Johnson came out of his break. Holding defense, number 27. Ten yard penalty, automatic first down. It's on the other safety, Mosley. Brooks on the handoff. 
hit by Hunt. Each coach looking for his first Big Ten win. Brom and Fleck. Rhoda on the roll. Incomplete for Wozniak at 6-10. It's third down coming up. Third down and eight. Rhoda just 18 yards, but the two scores on third down. They boot him again. Ezechuku and Miles see him run by, and Rhoda stretches out. They're going to have him just short. He's going to be about a quarter of a yard short of the marker with the knee down as he got belted by Neal. You got to go, right? Yeah, you do. I think Minnesota has to get something done. They have some rhythm on this drive, and they've actually been establishing things on the line of scrimmage quite well early in this one. Purdue's a little disorganized. Fourth down and one. Smith on the carry into the pile, and the first marker from the far side official looks like first down, and it is. Yeah, I think both officials coming in from either side had him getting basically to the 50, which is exactly where he needed to gain. Blitz coming. Rhoda backpedaling incomplete. Closest guy was Marcus Bailey, the linebacker. And this crowd, which actually was evacuated from the stadium because of weather, is getting fairly loud again. Second down. Brooks finds another seam. And he's going to set up third down and fourth. Smith. Tunneling forward, this will be fourth down at about a yard and a half. Wilson clubbed him down, and here we go. That play call would tell me it was going to be fourth down, and that's typically what happens to play callers. Their head coach comes up and says, you have two to get this one, and so it influences the third down call. You run the zone up inside, and you get to third and, I mean, fourth and pretty manageable right here, but I think Minnesota is certainly going to take a timeout and think this over. Minnesota, they're first. Straight ahead, first down, Brooks. Under five and a half to go. Rhoda fading back again, snaps it off incomplete. Changing the play now. And he might have wanted the other one. Brooks got a block from Lingen on the outside, and Brooks leans forward to the marker. I would say that he might have been a little bit short, but there's no stoppage coming. And the run for Smith. So again, remember that the yellow line is not 100% locked in accurate. And a whistle and a timeout. Yeah, the best of both worlds would be to burn clock and get a touchdown. Smith on the delay. Third down and manageable for the 21 coming up. Surely Minnesota has to run this again. They do. Smith turned away. I think Jeff Brom is going to choose to use one now. Fourth down, you don't want those precious seconds to burn off the clock before this field goal attempt. I think that's a really good use of it his first time out. Green Bay's finest, Devin Carpenter from 38. Carpenter. Santoso slips as he kicks it away. Knocks from the one. He had a touchdown earlier. Knocks along the sideline. He's across the 40. Santoso had to get up and knock him down. But he's had the controls of the offense since drive number four. Markel Jones gets the carry. Two timeouts left for Purdue. 
over the middle. He's got the tight end Bryson Hopkins, his first grab into plus territory, the gain of six. They trade off kickers every kick. We'll see who it even might be in the case of a game winner. Sindelar over the middle and across. Mahungu inside the 20 yard line. Huff chased him out and Purdue is set up. And one of the staples of this pass game in Purdue by Jeff Brom is the mesh play. You see crossing routes in the middle. Mahungu comes out the other side and it's up to the quarterback to sort out where the opening is and that time Sindelar did just that right on time and on target. Jones on the run, cuts inside, touchdown Purdue! They will go for two. After a drive that lasted 109. Sindelar to make it a seven point game. He's got it. Phillips, 24 17. That epitomizes both offenses in these programs currently. Touchback once again. Rhoda's only completed eight passes today. Rolling out. He has a completion to Lingen. Second down. Nice pickup by Smith to free Rhoda up to run for the first down. Clock moving with the ball spotted. Under a minute. Ezechuku got dragged down. Rhoda unloads it out of bounds. Rhoda. That is caught. Oh my goodness. Rashad still off the deflection gives Minnesota a pulse. An amazing catch. The defender almost has this. Does that ball get to the ground? Devon Hunt actually maybe should have picked that thing off. He didn't get up quite high enough and then still does a great job of keeping his eye on it, catches it the second time. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Completed catch, first down. Clock goes. Rhoda. Pressure comes. And incomplete. Ty Johnson had some green grass in front of him. Second down, 36 seconds. You cannot afford a sack right here. Second down. Ezechuku coming. He almost got there. This is a jump ball. Incomplete. Smith on the dump down. And he's out of bounds. So now the chains are the enemy. It's fourth down Minnesota. 23 seconds to go. What's your play call here? Yeah, the chains are the enemy. The clock at this point in time doesn't matter because you can call a timeout. But I still like the fact that Rhoda is best on the move. I probably move him into the trips and they have to get to the 22 yard line. Run pass option out to the triple side where the receivers are at the top of the screen. Rhoda. Game on the line. Intercepted Bentley. Jawan Bentley on his way to a victory for Purdue. Touchdown. <laughs> Dellinger's extra point is good. 10 seconds for a miracle for the Gophers. McCrary on the return. Make them, don't look around for someone else to do it. Shadron High School is champions tonight and Purdue's <laughs> learning how to win games in this particular conference. All good stuff. The light show begins. 
Jeff Brom will celebrate with his Boilermakers.